I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the fear of the Lord. You know, when you got saved, that showed you had the fear of the Lord. Or you wouldn't have got saved. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. If somebody's not saved, they're rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. They've not even begun to fear the Lord. They're not taking serious the consequences of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not taking serious the threat of hell, the place where God's anger is kindled. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Let's look at some verses about the fear of the Lord. Matthew 10, 28. In Matthew 10 and verse 28, it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body and hell. You think about Noah. In Hebrews eleven seven, it says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Noah was moved with fear to build the ark. When you got saved, you were afraid of what would happen if you didn't get saved. Some people act like that's a bad motive for getting saved. That's a good motive for getting saved because you don't want to go to hell. In Hebrews 12, 28, it says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Fear is a good thing. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Here's the wisest man that ever lived. And he says in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So fearing God. Paul says you ought to fear God. Jesus Christ says to fear God. Solomon says to fear God. You got saved. That was the first step showing that you have the fear of God. Then after you get saved, you live right. That shows you still fear God. When you're living right, you're fearing God. When you're not living right, you're not fearing God like you should. Psalm 111 and verse 10. In Psalm 111 and verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. So the fear of the Lord... Back in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. This says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, when it comes to the fool, the fool doesn't want to hear wisdom. He doesn't want to hear instruction because it hurts his pride. If somebody's telling him what to do, if somebody's telling him a better way to do something, if somebody's telling him something he doesn't know, if somebody is making him feel like they're, like if somebody's making him feel like he's low down or not the best or not the greatest, it's going to hurt his pride and they don't like being told what to do. Like a child. Like in Proverbs twenty two fifteen, it says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. So a, a, a fool that's prideful, he's going to despise wisdom and instruction. Maybe you work at a place where you got to train people a lot. And when you train people a lot, you find out really fast that people are full of pride. You'll be training them today, and in two days they'll be telling you what to do. They'll be telling you a better way to do a job that's been done that same exact way for the past 40 years. Maybe uh, you've been there 10 years. They've come in, they've been there two days, they're already telling you what to do. I train a lot of people. I've trained like 80 people in the past three years. 
I've been at my job seven years. I train them one day. They come in the next day. They're telling me what to do. They got a better way to do it. I show them how to stack the ice cream on a pallet. They got a better way to stack the ice cream in a week. And they say, can we stack it this way? I'm like, well, we've been stacking it this way before I even came here. I didn't make up these patterns. I never felt the need to change the patterns. Why do you feel like you can come off the street and change the patterns in two days? Now, maybe somebody could come in and think of a better way. But have the respect after two days not to come in and try to change how it's been done for 40 years. Keep your ideas to yourself until you've until you've earned your stripes first. But most of the time, I let them go ahead with those patterns. They're new patterns that they come up with. And you know what happens? They let the pallet out, and it just falls over. I mean, they, they had the certain stacking patterns for a reason way before I even came to the plant so obviously they've <clears throat> had a lot of trial and error and things like that you got to think fools despise wisdom and instruction foolishness is bound in the heart of a child some people are still like children foolishness is bound in their heart but men men of this world they hate God and they despise the Bible but it, because it tells them what to do. It tells them what they are. It exposes their sin. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The best thing you, do, you can do, quit fearing men, start fearing God. Quit feeling like you know everything. If a man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. And start getting wisdom and instruction from godly men who love the Bible and get a Bible and get instruction from it. He says in verse 8, My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Now remember, Proverbs is Solomon talking to his son Rehoboam that would eventually be king. And obviously he doesn't go by Solomon's wisdom and instruction he makes a mess of things that has a lasting effect on the kingdom of Israel but this is Solomon talking to Rehoboam and he's telling him hear the instruction of your father and your mother his mother was Nama historically and the son is Rehoboam and the father is Solomon historically but you Look at it. For you today, the son could be the Christian, the father, God. And you could even look at it another way. It could be uh, earthly father or earthly parents talking to their earthly son. But the mother and father should complement each other. Just as the Old Testament complements the New Testament. What they say, they need to be on the same page with what they tell the son, with how they're raising him. Just like the Old Testament, the law, complements the instruction of the New Testament. You think about the Old Testament, it's got nine letters in Old Testament. Our Testament has nine letters in it. And Old has three letters in it. So Old has three letters, Testament has nine letters and it just so happens there's 39 books in the Old Testament and then you take 3 times 9 what's 3 times 9 that's 27 and that's how many books you got in the New Testament in the Old Testament their mother was the law and for you in the New Testament it's New Jerusalem Galatians 4.26 you need to honor your father and your mother Exodus 20, 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. Ephesians 6, 1 through 2. Paul says, Honor your father and mother, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. You think about Timothy. Obviously, he honored 
his mother and his grandmother and he, he was taught from a young child the holy scriptures and he heard the instruction from his mother he heard the wisdom from his mother in 2 Timothy 1 5 it says when I call to remembrance the unfaith that it, unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice and I am persuaded that in thee also so his mother Eunice or Eunice and his grandmother Lois they trained him up in the way he should go and it doesn't seem like he despised the wisdom and instruction. It says in 2 Timothy 3, 14. 2 Timothy 3, 14. But continue, on the, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. From a child, he knew the Holy Scriptures. He did, it doesn't seem he despised wisdom and instruction. And then you go back to Proverbs, you look at verse 9. It says, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. So your father and mother teaching you the right things, if you take heed to it and listen, they become an ornament of grace to your head and chains about thy neck. In Proverbs, you know, it talks about a crown of glory. Shall she deliver to thee? You know, good wisdom from your parents, from your pastor, from somebody. It's like if you take heed to it, that stuff becomes a crown of the glory. Proverbs 4 9. Look at Proverbs 4 and verse 9. Proverbs 4, 9. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory, shall she deliver to thee. That's what wisdom will do for you. And when you listen to your parents, you listen to a good Bible-believing pastor, teacher, mentor, they can become an ornament of grace to you. In 1 Peter 3, 4, talking about a good wife, it talks about how, let's just go look at it. 1 Peter 3, 4. Look at 1 Peter 3, 1. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While I behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. A ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. When you don't despise wisdom and instruction, when you live right and you go by the hidden man of the heart, God sees on you ornaments of grace, ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit. In Proverbs 25, 12, it says, As an earring of gold, and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. You listen to a wise person that's giving you sound advice, and you have an obedient ear to it, that person becomes an ornament of fine gold. So when you listen to wise reproof from parents, from your preachers, the scriptures, or from anything else, God sees your obedience to it as an ornament of grace. And in Romans 13, 14, it says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So the right kind of living and the right kind of obedience is like putting on proper clothing. People want to put on jewelry. They want to put on nice clothes. Have an obedient ear to wisdom. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the hidden man of the heart. Listen to him. That becomes the proper clothing, an ornament of grace, 
an ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, an ornament of gold. You just work at it and you'll have some things. Work at doing right and you're clothing yourself. And it said, chains about thy neck. In verse 9 of Proverbs 1, it says, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. And the neck has to do with your will. Let wise men in the scriptures teach you the right choices. In Proverbs 29, in verse 1, it says, He that being often reproved, and hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. But... If you're choosing to do the right things, you're having an obedient ear to the wise reprover, then there'll be chains about thy neck, good chains, ornaments of grace, ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit. So I'll go ahead and stop there. We'll start up with verse 10 next time.